Hello, this is Hellbent, and welcome to tutorial 3 for the Auto Hotkey GUI tutorial series. Um, this is going to be the extended version where I'm going to include everything that I'm going to be doing within this tutorial all in one couple of videos. Um, if you're only looking for a very specific section within this, or a very specific topic within the, the edit box or edit field or whatever you want to call it, um, I've also done up to date, I've done eight mini tutorials for it, and I have like, I don't know, about six or seven more to do. But if you're only looking for a very specific thing to do, deal with this topic, you can just go watch the, those uh, four or five minute videos instead. Um, but if you want to have the full package, if you, you want to know everything about it, then stick with me here and watch through this series instead because in the long run it's going to save you a lot of time rather than watching the individual videos. Um, what I have here, if you're, if anyone's interested, what I have here is a just a little stopwatch so that way I can keep track of time. Now I don't know if you can find something else like this online, but uh, if you can't and if you want to get a copy of this, leave me a comment and if I get a couple comments saying that they people would like a copy of this, um, I might do a video showing you where you can get a copy of it and how to install it. Um, in other words, I'm not going to bother, but I, I'm not going to be including a link in the description to it because I would have to do it for the next video and the next video and the next video and over and over and over again. So if you're interested in it, just leave a comment and if I get a couple people saying that they would like a copy of it, I'll, I'll make a quick video, post it up, boom, and it's done. It's out of the way forever. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at in this tutorial is the edit control or the edit box or the edit field, however you want to call it. Um, I haven't done any tutorials in about three months, give or take, and not only haven't I done any tutorials, but I haven't done a lot of scripting in that time so I am hell of rusty so you're gonna have to bear with me while I get back up to speed if I can get back into some normal frequency um, just like before with doing the tutorials I should get get better at it again but like I said because I am rusty um, normally when I do particularly when I do these long tutorials um, I create a lesson plan and Normally I don't have to refer to it too much, but here we go. Here's my lesson plan, right? So, you know, I have all the subjects and then I talk about, I say, okay, hey, make sure you talk about something like that when you get to that point, right? So this is all the stuff. Normally I don't use this too much while I'm doing the tutorial. I usually just, you know, it's there if I need it. Um, but I have a feeling that I'm actually going to need to refer to my notes quite a bit to keep me on topic. So that, just bear that in mind while we go through this. Um, this is actually my second time trying to record this. The first time I got almost all the way to the end and I got stuck on something that wasn't working properly. I have no idea why it didn't work. When we get to there again this time, I'll tell you what uh, you'll, I'll let you know that this is what I was talking about when we get there. But, uh, I learned something from it, so you might eventually come to the same kind of problem. So now I have, I, I can tell you what that problem is. Anyways, let's jump into it. I don't want to waste too much time. I suspect that this series is going to be about three or four episodes long, but uh, I'll try to keep it as, as short as possible while being as thorough as I can. So first things first, let's add our uh, actually, let's back up a second. I've already, to save a little bit of time, I've already gone in and created a basic template for our GUI. It doesn't have anything on it yet. It just, you know, if I, I can open it, I can close it. It's got a little size, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's go in. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add our control, our edit box. So the command for that is GUI, comma, add, comma, and then the type of control we want, which is edit, comma, 
Now, after this next com after that comma there, we put in all of its uh, options or parameters, blah blah blah. You know, its position, blah 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 blah. And then after that, we put another comma. And if we want to have any text or something like that, that's preloaded with it, this is where we'll put it. So like hi. Okay, so here we have our edit box. It doesn't have any size or anything like that, but we'll have a look at what it's done. So here we have our little edit box. We have our, our text that we've preloaded into it. So let's talk about positioning it. Positioning it's just like with positioning buttons and text and blah, 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 blah. If you want to, I'm not going to go too deep into it with this. If you want to know more about more specific things within positioning, go back and watch the first tutorial or the second tutorial. The first tutorial, I probably covered it better. Um, and then as we go into more advanced things later on, you'll see how how we can incorporate. We will get back around to, to some of these things that you might be missing if you just watch this. So first things first, we're going to need an X position within our, our GUI. So let's pick 200. So this is our X axis from left to right. It starts at zero over here and then it builds to whatever number over there and then our y-axis works different than you might be used to uh, it starts at zero at the top and it increases as we go down but normally you would have it increasing into negative numbers with the programming it doesn't work that way it increases into positive numbers our negative numbers are up 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 right so it's a little bit weird like that it might you might get confused from time to time but after a few times you do it you'll you'll it'll be second nature so why I'm gonna put 200 so now we have our edit box it's gonna be somewhere somewhere about there next what we're gonna do is we're gonna change its width so right now whatever I can it can adjust its width on its own by based on what I fill into it but a better way of doing it is because we don't always know what's going to be going into it the better way is to pre pre-size this to a specific thing so that way we can build all the rather all the rest of the controls around it right we don't want it to be changing as we add things so we're gonna we're gonna specify what it's width is. we're gonna just pick 200 so its width is gonna be 200 with its height we could we could put a height in here but we're not going to because with the edit box it's actually better if we don't adjust the height um, if you do want to adjust the height I believe it is a minimum for for the default uh, font size or for the text size which is I think size 8 for that it's you want the minimum height to be 13 or 15 maybe 15 I think it's 15 so if you have it less than 15 the your let some of your letters are gonna get blocked off so it'll it'll start squeezing in on it you know like they can't breathe anymore they're gonna suffocate so if you're gonna use a specific height don't go below I think it's 15 it could be 13 it's one or the other it is either 13 for sure or it is 15 for sure you can test it on your own to see what it is but it's one of those two things guaranteed um, if you go below those you're gonna have some issues being diff it being difficult to read so like I said it's best not to actually control the height like this and we'll get into that how we do it another way in a few minutes okay so here we go okay so and if we're not happy with that we can play around with our values until we are happy okay so that's it for placing it and putting it on you know changing its position next what we have is changing the font the color things like that okay so we have a couple of options here for color for the color of our text we can either put it individually per control so in the options we can say C for color and then whatever color we want and do it that way so we'll test that out and it's I know it's hard for you to see but it is aqua um, there's only a few colors that you can use by word what you can do instead though is you can go to look up uh, HTML color codes and you can do a color picker and right and then copy the hex code minus 
the the pound sign or number sign or hashtag whatever you want to call it I'm not here to judge so we'll copy that code and we'll change the word of our color to that code and then if we run it again there we go I know that that one is probably really hard for you to see but it's like it's almost like a grayish color but anyways that's how you change the color inside if you want to do it for multiple controls like cut change the color for multiple controls what you can do is outside of your control you can type in GUI comma font comma and then you can put in that color now any any um, control so let's say if I have any text controls or more edit controls all of them that are following this line here so anything that's below it if I have multiple controls until I change this back to something else all of them are gonna have whatever I change in here so bear that in mind the way you can do it to restore it back to the default so let's say if I have if I have six controls and I only want three of them to have this color what I would what I can do and then everything else let's say everything else I want to be back to default what I can do is after I'm after the last control so I have three controls that are gonna have that control that color after that last control I can do it again GUI font and then nothing else and anything that follows this line here will all be the default the normal default color and size and everything all right so that's color um, we can also change its size the size of our text so right now its default is somewhere around 8 to 10 I don't know exactly what it is but it's you know it's got a default number it's 8 to 10 um, we're gonna change it to 22 let's have a look so it's S for size and then the size that we want it so as you can see it's much bigger now um, we can also have it underlined Okay, so now our text is underlined. We can have it bold. All right, so now it's a little bit bolder, et cetera, et cetera. The normal things that you can do with a, a word processor or a word editor or a text editor, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then after that, after those options, if we put another comma, we can actually change the typeface. So let's see. Is it MS? Okay, so we'll change it to, and there we go. We got a different typeface. So this is how you do that. And like I said, if you want to switch it back to its default, all you do is after the last control that you want to use it. So let's say if there was another control right here, and then I have this control, and then every all the controls after that. I want it to be back to its default I would just put in the GUI font and nothing else and then everything all the controls that are after it will be back to their default okay so that's it for editing the color and the font uh, now let's do the limit so there might be cases where you want to actually limit the amount of characters that a person can put into this edit box so right now I can continue off into the sunset um, right I can continue off okay but uh, there might be reasons why you want to change that so the way you limit the amount of characters that somebody could enter is in its options you just type in limit and then without any spaces you put in the limit the amount of characters that you want them to be able to put so we'll save that and now I meant to test this earlier but okay just as I thought okay so space does count as a character as it, it makes sense that it would so you can type in up to eight characters and a space does count as a character so for example you could use a phone number so we got five 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 what did I say eight digits so we'll put in that one two three four okay so we wanted a phone number we only want the seven digit code plus the little slash there and if they try to add anything more it won't let them okay you know what? I'm not even sure if you can actually hear that yeah I guess you can hear it through the mic 
but I turned off the computer sound so I'm not sure if you could pick up that that tone <clears throat> but you should hear it through the mic if anything okay so that's how you limit the characters you're probably not gonna ever need to use that but that's how you do it um, let's get rid of this code here because we're done with that okay next what we have is rows now this is what I was talking about not adjusting the height what we can actually do is rather than specifying a height the way we did with this or in other words doing it with a height the H for height what we can actually do is have it in rows there's a couple advantages to this one we get the the amount of space that we want right off the bat we we don't have to guess around another thing is the amount of white space so right now we have a if we get now that we've gotten rid of that um, we have an e pretty much an equal amount of white space to the top an equal amount of white space to the bottom our characters aren't going to be um, distorted they're not going to be anything's going to be cut off so if we were to do try to guess let's say we wanted 10 lines of of uh, writing we want to write 10 lines of things in this we might have to play around for a few minutes to get it the right height and then even then you know it might not be as good as we can get it so what we can do instead is in the options we can just say R for the amount of rows that we want and then type in the amount of rows okay and once we get the good thing about this is once we get past the second row it actually adds in this horizontal or vertical uh, slider so as we go we actually now have the option to to scroll with an arrow and if we, if we made it a few rows higher let's say five we'd actually be able to um, there we go we'd actually be able to scroll up like this okay so this is rows um, let me see if I had anything show with font size too okay I don't need to do that my notes say show with sh with the font size too but oh yeah I understand what I understand what I'm talking about there okay so the good thing about rows is it's automatically going to adjust itself based on your font size so if I go in and change the font size now I've said I want it to be five rows and it doesn't care what my font size is so I'm going to change its size to 22 and it'll automatically adjust so that I still have five rows okay so that's it for rows let me see okay now next we're going to talk about the the horizontal slider so by default we don't have a horizontal slider there's no way for us just by default uh, to get that and in fact the second that we got this vertical slider in its default properties that we can't see it's actually added something called wrap now what wrap does is because we have this vertical slider as soon as our text gets to the edge rather than it continuing off into the sunset what it's actually going to do is drop down to the next line so if I right and nothing goes off over to the right there might be a reason why even without the vertical slider I mean the horizontal slider that you might want to go off to the side now that's I think that's bad programming but there might be a reason that you might want it to do that so to do to accomplish that all you have to do is just turn off the wrap feature and the way you do that is you type in minus and then wrap and now your text can actually go off to the right but in order for you to actually read that you would actually have to highlight your thing and scroll over and that's going to get annoying real fast the better way to do that is forget about this typing in this because the next command that we're going to type in has that minus wrap built into its default so all we have to do for this is we just type in in our options for our edit we type h scroll h scroll gives us our horizontal slider and there we go now we can go off to this to the right and we can scroll between it all right and we can drop down to a new line 
Okay, so that's the horizontal scroll. Let me see, we're up to 19, 20 minutes. Okay, I'm going to cut this video here. Like I said, it's going to be a couple parts because I, I don't like watching tutorials that are like an, an hour long because I have to go do other things, blah, blah, blah. And when I come back to it, I'll lose my place. So I'd rather watch through a video, get to the end of it, and then if I have time to watch the next video, I'll watch the next video. If I don't, I'll come back and watch it the next day. All right, so that is it for this. I will see you on the next one, and I'm going to be filming it right now. So have a good day. See you on the next one.